I'm Vin. I'm sorry. And this is Testament Children of the Next Level. For Double Kick Sally. <laughs> you even want to say that for quite some time. I am. I said, okay, so we can go by Chris or... <laughs> double Kick, you gotta go with Double Kick Sally. For time for sure. and topical political commentary, you can hit us up in Middle America with Vin and Sorry. Uh... <laughs> There's been a lot of misinterpretation of the previous video, so uh, I might, I might um, shoot a follow up. I might not. Um, so there's that. Uh, there's multiple ways to get your song reviewed. Dear listener, my favorite way is the community option. One dollar per gate gets you in at Patreon, where you get to meet the amazing Kellen Dross. My wife just abandoned me. You get to meet the amazing Kellen Dross. You get to meet uh, Damon Sage, be part of their alliances. They pull their points together, and then uh, that influences what songs that we do. Now, if you're a filthy capitalist like Sorry, or what did he call himself? <laughs> he okay. said the filthy, rotten, despicable, horrible capitalist way. <laughs> if you are a filthy, uh, rotten, despicable, horrible capitalist like Double Kick Sally, or uh, double kick sorry, then uh, 125 Don't gets you. you dare double kick me. Jump straight, <laughs> straight to the head of the line. Where you uh, get the, the your song reviewed before everybody else, and you don't have to, you know, talk to your teammates or anything like that. Unless very in which case you are double kick Sally, and somehow I made a mistake. And if you land in the situation like him, where you're he waited like two months. If you've been waiting two months, that's that's beyond the time. So message me and say, hey, what's up? In case I made a mistake, I'm not perfect. Well, you're getting a shirt. Yep, I mean, for your troubles. Shirt. Yeah, you got a shirt for your troubles, double kick. So there you go. <laughs> let me know uh, your size. Yeah, let us know your size in the comment on this thing here. All right, let's go. My thingy just. You can came message out. me on Patreon. Uh, and this tell me your is... size. You don't have to let the entire YouTube world know your size. What the hell? I mean, I mean, I don't think he cares. I mean, he's Some people do. Some him. people are like, Ugh. Okay, I need ready? an extra large to deal with my guns. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> chat, chat. All right, let's go. Here we go.
<laughs> oh man. Interesting. That's we, definitely we did, the heaven's gate. We did cult. practice what you preach. Yeah, definitely. I didn't like that song. We didn't. No. I felt like they were like a complete copy of Metallica. This song came but out. This is good. This was very, very good. Yeah. All the testament. Calendross. Right. Calendross is mad at me. Like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about, Fred. Blah blah. blah. <laughs> Guy hates me for having an opinion. It's hilarious. Um. Holy crap! 2020. This just came out. Oh. These guys have been around since Metallica's been around. Subhanallah. Really? Yeah. 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 Um. Mm. I haven't heard like a good thrash type of song Well, he said, uh, look, in a while, he's like, we needed some energy. Right here. He said, that, yeah, I'm an old thrasher drummer dude from the golden years of thrash metal. Metal. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so Children of the Next Level. This is a good. This Pulling is, up the lyrics. This is about. Th this is this is about. Marshall Applewhite and the Heaven's Gate cult. We've did it. We've done it. Yeah, a, yeah. There's been a couple. Are songs. they the ones that drank the Kool Aid? Well, the Kool Aid was uh, uh, Jim Jones. Yeah. But it was a basic. Time that was period, in Africa. Right? No, no, no. Jim Jones was in Africa in the late '80s, early '90s. Marshall Applewhite was. That 90. was in Africa. Yeah. Yeah. Why do I always forget Marshall that? Applewhite was like ninety. I feel like only Americans are doing stuff like that. Six ninety six ninety seven. And I, I know the date because we had just moved to New York from New Jersey and I was eating my Cheerios or whatever before school and then sure enough this this happened. So it must have been either. And Big died in 97. So it either happened 96 or 97. Pretty sure it's probably 97. But um, so what happened was there was this yeah. comet, the Hale, yeah. the Hale Bob Hale. comet. Yeah. And that was one of the signs that there was a, there was a, there's like an invisible U UFO behind the Hale Bob comet. And they were supposed to drink this, you know, whatever, and then they would ascend to the to the. Uh, yeah, they were gonna like jump on the comet and kind ride of off there. into yeah. the next uh, whatever, which they, you know, so they were true believers, and they and they did, and they were led by this dude named Marshall Applewhite. Um, did I ever show him to you? No. He was a strange. Uh, there are some people's names that like, Marshall Applewhite. Yeah, there he is, right there. That's Marshall Applewhite, right there. So yeah, some um, people just don't look like somebody you should follow. You know, but he speak. He spoke very like he was very genteel in the way that he spoke. It's the same thing. Like were there during, any kids? Uh, no, no. But I mean, they were like young adults. You know what I mean? Like people saying goodbye to their parents and all this stuff. Like, but you know, like Athanasius was a very like acerbic, mean, you know, black little dwarf is what they used to call him. He was very mean. Whereas um, Arius, the heretic, was very nice. Mm -hmm. Everybody liked him. He was very uh, convincing in the way that he spoke. And then you had Athanasius. Of course, now as, you know, Athanasius won that debate. So now we say that Athanasius is a good guy and mm -hmm. Arius is the bad guy. Mm -hmm. But at the time, you know, you would everybody would have been drawn to Arius and not Athanasius, you know. That's why I don't bother myself too much about being rough around the edges or rubbing people the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> that means that I'm orthodox. Oh, well, look at that. <laughs> but my my this is really interesting because, you know, first of all, you know, when Jesus talks about the coming of the Son of Man and all this stuff, mm -hmm. um, and one of the things he says is, if they tell you he's off in the wilderness or in some secret room, don't listen to him. Which was actually uh, a very big thing during wow. Jesus' time because their understanding of Messiah was that he was going to be a political warrior. And so a lot of times you'd get these guys, the Bar Kokhba revolt and all the rest of these guys, they'd go out into the wilderness and because they would, you know, they'd keep it secretive yeah. because they, they, you know, they wanted to amass their army and then they would, they would go out and mm -hmm. fight. So it was very common for these messianic pretenders to say, to be very secret about what they were doing because they were, yeah, they were going, going to overthrow against. Rome. Yeah. So Jesus, so that's oh, the actual, that's, true. that's the actual that's direct context where he says, don't go out into the woods, don't go out into the, don't do that. Hmm. Um, but
But there's also, even if you want to apply the Olivet Discourse to like the future future, mm -hmm. it would still protect you from this stuff. Mm -hmm. Because these guys are always Off. doing some secret thing yeah. that nobody knows about, whereas Jesus was always public about what mm -hmm. he was saying and he was very explicit about what he was saying. Yeah. Calling themselves a cell or something like that. Yeah. Like weird people. Yeah. Strange people, you know. And and so like Jesus Jesus came out and said, Hey, the kingdom of God is at hand, which was mm -hmm. a very dangerous statement and it was absolutely political. Mm -hmm. Nobody who heard Jesus saying the kingdom of God is at hand would have ever interpreted that as a spiritual kingdom at all. Mm -hmm. They interpreted that as a political uh, movement. And so Jesus had to spend three and a half years saying, well, it's kind of a combination of both. You know, and then you've got whole denominations that jump on one side or the other. Mm -hmm. It's very, very fascinating. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, I remember this, man. I remember... You know, it was weird. I was a kid and I hadn't really experienced a lot of death yet and I obviously was not a parent. So I didn't, you know, because they had the, the parents of some of these people on. Yes. And at the time, I, I was just like, how could you follow a guy like that? I thought it was funny. Like, how could you follow a guy like that? And, and I was always fascinated by like, how do you people convince other people to do that? I feel like none of our kids would be convinced of something like this, except... I think that if Johan could be convinced, he'd be the first one on. Yeah, but Johan would be so argumentative that, right. that cult leaders... <laughs> but if you could convince him! <laughs> cult, cult leaders are not very good with, with any sort of dissension. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So... Why? But, do you think one of our kids could be convinced to do something like this? I actually think Dorian could. What? I think he could. I no. can see. I can see him getting no, so tired he, of him. I can see no him. money to be made in this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I could see him getting so tired of himself and, you know, if he attains his millions that he worships so much and then he sees how empty it is, I could see him, like, swinging the no, other way. No, I totally disagree with you, but that's yeah. a very funny discussion. Yeah, I, I could definitely see him swinging the other way. Because, Maybe. I mean, you're better he's, he's knowing built his human whole, he's, he's built his whole <laughs> foundation on, on being rich and, and whatever. Yeah. And I know that that's not going right, to satisfy right, right, right. him. Uh, but he doesn't know that. So people, you know, I've had, you know, I've had rich friends and, and they, they really hit a crisis point to where they don't know what to do with themselves Yeah. because they're, they're so rich and they're still not happy. And so I've been telling him the whole time, like, that's not going to make you happy, but he doesn't, you know, he doesn't get it. You know, he, he told me a couple days ago, he's like, it's not about happiness. It's about self-worth. Okay. So, yeah. you know, obviously the image of God thing isn't, uh, isn't doing it for him, so he thinks money's going to do it for him. So I could definitely see him falling susceptible to that thing, for sure. For sure. Because it gives him the, the transcendental meaning that, he's, that he desperately wants. And it gave these people, I mean, that's, that's the thing about these people, is they'll bring you in and it's like, we know something that nobody else knows. Like, that's, that's also, in my mind, the logic of the conspiracy theorists. Yeah. It's no, you're right. It gives you a sense of importance, and it gives you a sense of uh, superiority to everybody around you. Everybody's just a sheep, but I know the real truth. And if you get a guy that can harness that sort of delusional mm -hmm. sort of understanding, you can be. It can be very, very like we're at a point now. Like in the next year or two, you're gonna see like these movements are gonna pop up, and things are gonna get really crazy because these people. You know, Jeez. you've got, you know, I talked about this. You've got people on the right and people on the left who are, who are crafting these conspiracy theories about people trying to destroy the country. And there are people in here that are trying to ruin America. People within America who are trying to take America down. I said that in, in, a, in a, like, not the last Middle America, but the previous Middle America. I said, there was nobody in the country that is actively, like, that with any power, that's actively trying to destroy America. Like, Trump is not trying to destroy America. BLM is not trying to destroy America. Biden is not trying to destroy America. I mean, they have other nefarious goals. Yeah. But destroying America is not one of them. And somebody goes, oh, I have no respect for you whatsoever. This is plain as day, da 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 And I'm like, I know that that guy is not as connected as... Mm -hmm. As I'm just as I am, I just he's not. There's no way. Yeah. But he's convinced. Yeah, I know. That you know that there's this big plan and 
and uh, I, I'm I, I'm on the Glenn Beck page, you know, and uh, God help me, and I'm on Shapiro and all the rest, and, and I follow all these guys in different forums or whatever. And to hear these people talk, they're they're like, we got to do this ourselves, man, because uh, basically Trump's hands are tied, and these guys are going to come over and take over and destroy our. Country. It's 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 really da we're in a dangerous time period, man. And so it's not going to take a lot to get a guy who can who can harness that paranoia and that delusion of grandeur and that self-aggrandizement that, that folks have, these conspiracies. There's not going to be long where people are able to do that and then start really creating. I'm not talking about like militia because militia, I don't really, I've got a more nuanced understanding of militia because there have been militia over, like, as a matter of fact, anytime you're trying to do anything overseas, you're, 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 you either work with the militia or you work with creating a militia. Hmm. So I don't think militia is crazy because uh, I I don't believe that the gov so I don't believe that there's elements in our government that are trying to destroy America. I also don't believe that there are elements of the government who are doing everything for our good and our best interest. They oh, have self not. they yeah. have self interest I mean, and they have an interest yeah. in maintaining their power. Yeah. And so militias are important for that perspective to always keep that type of threat there. Mm -hmm. So I don't think militia people are crazy. But I do think that there is a, and again, this is on the right and the left, because you have Antifa type militants, you know, during the whole Chaz situation. I don't know much about what was going on with the Chaz, um, where you had, these guys were armed and they were, you know, walking around and, and whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, obviously they didn't do a very good job at uh, protecting citizenry. It was, it was a version, it was the parodied version of anarchy that people who were against anarchy would love to see, which is not the anarchy of Noam Chomsky and all the rest of the right, people that right. I know. But my point is, you have militants on both sides, and all it's going to take is one guy to figure out how to harness that shit yeah. and, and play up on these people's ego, and you'll be surprised at the hell that can be wrought on this planet. You, know, you got people afraid of martial law, so they're creating all these situations where martial law becomes necessary so they can fulfill the prophecy, and then the guy can go, see, I told you! You know, like, it, we're in a really, really dangerous time, and people don't realize it, because, you know, you know, it's 2020, he's talking about Marshall Applewhite, people don't even probably know what the hell he's talking about, mm -hmm. but, um... That kind of really began my... Because at first I was laughing at it as a kid. I was like, this is insane. Like, what? <laughs> the guy's name is Marshall. <laughs> How the hell do you get... Do you, do you, like, put your life in the hands of a guy named Marshall? You know, like... But, again, that's my silly, you know, childish yeah. mind. You know, that's, that's my childish mind not understanding. Because I'm looking at it like I would never follow that guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but... But I didn't understand how the human mind works. I didn't understand how depression works. Because people who are emotionally vulnerable always fall victims to these groups because they're on their last leg. And a lot of these people are suicidal anyway. And so to create some sort of transcendent meaning to, uh, around their suicide. Um, because guys like that say, the reason you feel suicidal is because you don't belong in this world. And da-da-da-da-da. And you've always felt out of place. And blah, 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 blah. I mean, they just... You know, they just lay it on you, oh and then it, it, it gives them this whole, they go, oh, that's why, and then they run into other suicidal people. And, uh, so, like, there's a lot that goes into that stuff. I had to do a, uh, a uh, basically, like, a character sketch of how to um, influence people to do things that they normally wouldn't do, and... You had, you had guys like this, but it's literally the same thing that happens with Islamic terrorism, where you get these Palestinian kids who don't see any future, they're poor, and they're under the boot of the Israelis, and they're already suicidal. It's not like no. these are people who, uh, in, in the main, because I'm watching a lot, I, you know, you may have watched these interviews or whatever, and, and the difference between a cult leader and a jihadist recruiter are not that different they it was very strange watching the template because the template is almost exactly the same i feel um, like i'd find something like that interesting it, well it, it wasn't it no was i'm saying like you want, watching something where they point out the see. similarities between different types of kind of 
crazy sort of minds. Yeah. But I wouldn't want if there's anything. You yeah, know. you find an emotionally vulnerable person. Wow, that's a terrible. lot of these guys were were uh, they 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 pose as you know whatever at, at mental hospitals things of that name. Like it's crazy what they do, and so. You get somebody who's already checked out of the planet, and then you 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 boot you, you boost their ego up, you know. So in, instead of saying you have a mental illness, you need help, which is what they've heard all their life, they're being told, "Oh no, these people are mentally ill. You know the real thing. You were chosen. You're special." Da 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 da. da. They try to drug you up or whatever to be like them, but in reality, and of course. We are over medicated. You see what I'm saying? Like the lines yeah. get very, very blurry, and then they take these people, and then people That's go off and, and do types of crazy things because everybody's looking for meaning, significance, purpose. And, so did and, he do it too? It. That Applewood guy? He jumped oh, 100%, in. 100 percent. So he believed his own. Yeah, I mean, crazy. he did it. He was crazy. He did. He did it. it, 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 it you know, so. Um, that's one of the main variances between this guy and a suicide bomber recruiter because they'll never do it. Those guys never do it. They recruit. Oh, they never. They almost. They, they almost never do it. Oh my gosh. But they're they're always recruiting, and it's always the, the template's always very very similar. It's a young male who you know he's been under the boot of the Israelis for whatever, and he doesn't see a future for himself and and all that. And so the recruiter says, "Hey, you, uh, you don't have a future for yourself because Allah has separated you to be a sh shaheed." Well, I mean, remember <coughs> Piper was. <laughs> You know, getting everybody going for mission work, and you know, so, you know, giving your life for the gospel and stuff overseas. But he's still here, just saying the message. Like people could look at what we, you know, our side and say the same thing. It's true. Oh, you're always recruiting, but you're never it's true. going. Although, although he's had his life threatened on a multitude of occasions. I mean, people have walked up to him and says, "If anything happens to my son over there, I'm going to kill you." That's happened. So. Yeah. He's still he's still dealing with the fallout. And again, these guys don't do it out in public where their words can be measured. They do it, you know, uh, okay. in, in, yeah. in secretive ways. And yeah. so the entire it's kind of this gnostic sort of like you have the secret wisdom that no. Yeah, else and has. I think that the other thing too is like going after the weak or the young or you know what I mean, the easily influenced. Where you know that preacher, he preaches the message out and it's not like he's yeah. targeting a certain group of people right right um right right wow That's... um but th this it's cults like this like they they grab on to which is i thought was one of the weaknesses of the the course but of course i understand separation of church and state or whatever but these people are grabbing on to the desire in human beings to be transcendent mm -hmm. it's like i always say like you know, I don't yeah. have a position on evolution or any of that stuff. I, I don't have a problem with saying on a technical level we're animals. What I'm saying is we're more than that. Yeah. We're more than that. Mm -hmm. And as long as people want to keep pretending that we're not more than that, then that's fine. But these people tap into the transcendent element of, of the human nature that says, I know that I'm more than this. And so the, the, these cult leaders come in and they say, yeah. Of mm -hmm. course, Jesus flips the whole thing. Because he goes and does the dying. Mm -hmm. He goes and does the dying. And he says, um, you know, they're going to do this and that to you. Mm -hmm. um, but he says, if you can live, live. That's why he says, if you're persecuted in one town, flee Go to the, the next, next town. Yeah. It, like, Christianity was not a death cult. Mm -hmm. Like, Jesus was saying, I'm going to do all the dying. But if you're going to go out and, and help change this world, you're going to run into the forces that, yeah. that have the power who are, who are going to kill you. Mm -hmm. They're going to kill you. And if you can escape, get the hell out of Dodge. Mm -hmm. Don't fight them, because we're pacifists. Sorry, guys. Uh, you didn't have Christians rocking around with M4s in the first century. I don't know what to tell you. Um, but he said, flee, run. And then yeah. you had Paul. You know, Paul was, you can get, he got uh, lowered down the, uh, lowered down in the basket and escaped and he fled. So the, the first Christians were not, I mean, look, if they got caught and they were sentenced to death, they would sing on their way to the arena. But they weren't trying to get themselves killed. Right. It's not a death cult. Right. Because the the, the focus was on Jesus' death and Jesus' resurrection. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, yeah, but I mean, they, well, I think that they I'm glad they that weren't they, controlled by death in that. You know, some people it's like they're they're seeking after it, or you know what I mean. Like they weren't they weren't controlled by it and and living in fear of death. Correct. Sadat. They went about their business. They did what they had to do, and you know, if they could, you know, 
continue to stay alive and continue to share that message, then that's what they were trying to do. But they weren't gonna, you know, right? Chris flip Ann, out and be in fear of Chris death Ann either. Was, yeah, they Chris faced was, it, you know, bravely. Yeah, yeah, the early Christians were actually a uh, focused on life. You know, Jesus mm -hmm. says the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. Right. So the goal of Christianity was not death; it was living, mm -hmm. and it was. But but it was also a revolutionary understanding of how to be a human being, mm -hmm. which came into direct conflict with um, the powers that be. And so death was sort of incidental to what mm -hmm. they were trying to accomplish, and it was a price they were willing to pay. That's mm -hmm. vastly different. From somebody saying, "Come out into the woods with right. me. I'm gonna, you know, do this thing, right. and then we're all gonna go and kill ourselves and go and end up on the mothership." I just, I just think that in the next year or two, um, especially after, the, especially so after these, say that. especially after these, well, didn't I say? I know. They don't That's why it's cap, scary. They're gonna activate militants. That's why it's scary. I think you'd be right or not. I, 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 Wait till you wait till you see what happens in these elections. Wait till wait till after the elections. You'll see. I mean, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. You're going to have the housing crisis. You're going to have probably 250k deaths from COVID. You're going to have people kicked out of their homes, and then you're going to have all these trillionaires and billionaires. Um, mm. You watch. It's going to get really hectic. Somebody let me get, somebody let me get, the, let me get this off. I give this one a um, a 9.4. I actually really liked it. It's a 9.8 for me. I oh. think it's going to be very very relevant mm -hmm. in the very near future unfortunately what were we gonna say it was just a meme i saw where they were talking about people not wearing their masks and um how the the people that lose people because of that are gonna they're gonna get militant because they're gonna need they want to bring it somewhere but anyway then out sorry out gone they need a lie just to escape Broken world